never know. You never know. Uh, exciting day. Exciting day at Stevenson Ranch Scottsdale, guys. We have the fucking Cy Young. Can we get a, can we get a clap from the gallery? We got the goddamn Cy Young in the house. <laughs> huge accolade. Huge year for you. Congrats, buddy. Short, but... Yeah, short, yeah. weird, very weird. Very, very odd, very odd. No fans, which sucked. What, uh... Is there, is there any aspect of that that you think played like a... A part in your success this year was it yes. was there yeah i wanted yeah. to ask that was one of the first questions uh, i wanted to ask you so i i'm like a i'm a preparer you yeah. know um i spend my life in the gym working mm -hmm. out studying like all, that, that's all i do mm -hmm. most guys when quarantine happened like they're at home they don't have a gym right there you know, working out was tough throwing was tough whatever the case is so i knew that going into the season i was going to be ahead of a lot of guys mm -hmm. hitters especially you know you mm -hmm. go the whole off season where you don't see live pitching most guys don't face live pitching in the right. off season you go to spring training you get your six uh four weeks i guess of hitters uh being there and yeah. most guys roll into the season and have a offenses are still slow the first couple months i was mm -hmm. like now you stack basically two off seasons back to back and the season's only two months, and you don't get spring training. Like, crazy hitters, hitters are going to be behind. Never thought of that. And I was going to be ahead of pitchers, and I was like, I, this is going to be a good, a good situation. Plus, I had like seven months of development time, mm -hmm. which you never get that un uninterrupted. So I made a lot of improvements, strength wise, like ability wise. Worked on my command a ton. Worked on a bunch of other stuff. So I, like, I knew I had a a leg up going in, and I'm internally motivated. Like I. I can get myself up to pitch in the desert in front of freaking cacti or in front of 50,000 people. It doesn't matter if I'm competing. Like, why? I can get up for it. Why are you like that? You have, have you ever thought about why you are the way you are? Like, because you're very, you're very <laughs> no, seriously, you're very. Uh, Rachel, my, my agent, Rachel, asks me this all the time. She goes, Trevor, why are you the way you are? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> it's like, I, I don't mean it in a negative way. I mean it in a no, positive yeah. way. Like, it's, because it's, uh, think about it. What, what, what year was this? What, what season was this in your career? Like, what was. Oh, shit. How I mean, long my, were you in the big leagues? I, uh, I debuted in 12. Um, had I pitched four games in 12, four games in 13, and then I was up for four months in yeah. 14. Yeah. So I think technically it's my, I think it was my ninth season in the big yeah. leagues. And that's kind of my point is just like, look, got, for, for you to feel the way you feel about, and just like what you just said, like I can get myself up to pitch in front of no one in the fucking yeah. desert. It's, it's uh, tough, but. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of those things that I feel like, it separates the people that go on to have incredible careers and guys who kind of plateau or just settle in in their position, you know? Yeah. And you've had, you've had a great career, but to be in season nine and get a, and get a Cy Young yeah. is a crazy... It says a lot about the mental fortitude that, like, you've developed over the so years. So I was actually just having this conversation last night with one of my buddies, and uh, he, he describes it kind of like an upward sawtooth. You know, so you, you, you try... And you get a little bit better, and then you hit a roadblock. And so, like, your mood kind of comes down. You, you fall back a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can either then continue falling back, or you can say, no, I'm going to pick myself up. And, and then you go up for a little bit more, and then you hit another roadblock. And so you have this upward sawtooth. Some people have a downward one where they, like, don't do anything. Then they try a little bit, have some results. And like, okay, I can relax. And now it's like Love this that. downward thing, right? Um, my entire life, I've been, like, just hitting roadblock after roadblock after roadblock socially. Like, had no friends in high school. Just got made fun of and bullied and, like, all that stuff all the time. Really? Uh, at, yeah. Like, athletically, I was never the, like, I was never the chosen one, right? Like, I, I had good results, but, like, I didn't throw as hard. I didn't hit the ball as far. I wasn't as flashy, whatever the case is. But even so, in, like, my high school, my junior year of high school, I ended up going 12-0 with, like, a .7 ERA and... But I didn't start the year as even our top third, like three starters. I came wow. out of the bullpen the first two or three games because everyone's like, "Yes, wow, you know, whatever." Uh, and then that that ended up That's being wild. My, my last year of high school. The next year, I won like freshman pitcher of the year in NCAA when I should have been a senior in high school. Um, but even then, it was like you know Garrett Cole is the best pitcher, and then so I went. went into, so you went. So you left high school early. Yeah, I split my senior year. I went half. I, I graduated in December because uh, I was just I was done with. The social scene there. I was done with the baseball program. I was, I'm out, man. I can't do this. Uh, and I had been taking night classes at the at the community college. Um, wow. So I actually went into UCLA with more than half a year of college credit, 
and I graduated high school half a year early. So I basically just split half and half as my freshman year at UCLA and, and high school senior. It's interesting. Uh, I didn't know any of that. It's, isn't it interesting to look back at the story of your life? And s I feel like everyone has versions of this. Some people have versions they don't like. But when you have, when life gives you these negative things, like not fitting in socially, yeah. I'm sure at that point in your life, you're like, why? Dude. You know, I'm sure you, I'm sure you had, I don't want to get into that. Yeah. That's, I love, I love this kind of stuff because it shapes you. The question I asked before, why are you the way you are? This has, all these things are, are yeah, ingredients you, to why. You have context at this point, right? Like right. I'm basically 30 now. I turned 30 in the middle of January. So mm -hmm. I look back at this and I'm like, oh, okay, I see how all of these experiences made, like, or were basically the building blocks of what I am today. And like a lot of the attributes that I have that are, like so different from other people. Like my, my, my willingness to just go to the gym seven days a week and work out for five, six hours. Like other people want to go and yeah, you know, do this or do that. My, my hobby is like getting better, you know? So I, I, but that's all I did in high school because I didn't have the option to go mm -hmm. do anything else. Mm -hmm. I didn't get invited to the party. I didn't get invited to go out to the football game and sit in the student section. If I wanted to go to the Friday night football game, I was sitting with my dad in like a different part of the stands talking baseball while watching football. I love that. You know, like my dad worked out of town. He worked in New Mexico. We lived in Los Angeles. So he would leave Sunday night and he'd get back at like three in the morning on Friday morning. So if I wanted to get any better during the week as a 10 year old, as a 12 year old, as a 14 year old, like I was riding my bike up to the local park to train on my own because like that was how I had to get my work in. And the agreement was always, I'll get you pitching lessons. I'll, I'll provide for you know, your improvement so long as you do the work. So you're not taking the same lesson over and over. And would it have been great to have a friend to go hang out with? Sure. Would I have gotten as much work done? Absolutely not. Would I be where I am today because of it? Absolutely not. So now I look at my, like the main thing that drives me now is I'll just, I outwork everybody, mm -hmm. you know? And if someone outworks me, like it doesn't happen very long because it pisses me off. And like, it's like a source <laughs> of pride for me, you know? And like, so I can, I can improve at a, at a faster rate than other people. And that's what, incredible and it's just this whole like lifelong thing that's this this man i don't have friends what's wrong with me why does no one like me now flipped into like later in life i have this skill set where i can just like push through stuff and like keep now picking when, myself when up. hardships or when mental blocks and i mean i'm sure you deal with it any like dude that's that's such a valid fucking point about when you realize like d dude even in at 30 when i was in 30 years old i i there was, i have trouble like Oh, I want to be at this place. Why am I not there? Why? Oh, I'm not feeling accepted here. All the, the, that never stops. You know, at some point you get into a family and you settle into your family life and you kind of stop, stop even caring. Mm -hmm. But the way that shaped the way you're able to kind of navigate life as an adult, it's crazy to think about. And, and in hindsight, it's just a wild, it's a wild thing to look back at and actually realize. That's you, I didn't really know that about yeah, you. Yeah, you end up being thankful for something that you hated Amen. so much at the time. Right? Love that. Like, I had, a, I had a moment, um, the, other, the other part of it, the, the really transformative part was like, I got bullied a ton, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I would wear, you know, sweats and a t-shirt or whatever to school because that's just, that's what I liked. And mm -hmm. I, was, I could wear my Duke sweats and I'd wear, you know, whatever the case is. But like, I had no sense of fashion. I didn't care about it because I cared about baseball. That was like, mm -hmm. that's all I cared about. So I get made fun of nonstop, you know, oh, for how you dress, how you act, you carry around the shoulder tube around school, all this different stuff. So I get bullied a ton. And at some point, I, I remember I had distinctly one morning, I went to the, I woke up at like 5.30 in the morning, I went to the YMCA and did like an hour of mechanical like pool work, right? I got back home, took a shower, had to go to my, uh, I had to leave by like 7.30 to get to, 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 get to class. Mm -hmm. And I remember drying off and looking in the mirror and being like, what's wrong with me? Why don't people like me? And about 10 seconds later, I was like, oh, I don't care why people don't like me. I like what I see. I like myself. I work hard. I'm going places. I'm going to be a college athlete. I do well in school. I treat my family well. Like I'm not in in trouble. I'm not off, you know, getting arrested at the park like some of my teammates were at the time for fighting. I'm not like bringing alcohol alcohol onto a school bus and getting written up going to a dance like stuff like this, you know? Like I like what I see. So in that moment that day I I <clears throat> remember it very distinctly. I just decided, you know, as long as at the end of the day I can look in the mirror and like what I see looking back at me, that's all, I, that's all I'm gonna worry about. I wanna be proud of myself and that's it. <clears throat> and from that day forward, like I went to school, I, I no longer hated school. 
because if someone said something to me, I just, I felt fine just like firing wow. back, you know, I'd be like, oh, you don't think I dress well? Well, you suck at baseball, <laughs> you know, or like, you know, just these things like, uh, you know, I'd be talking to a girl and she just completely ghost me and ignore me forever. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like I can play that game. I, you know, and, and so I started, that's really where my love of trolling started because all these people that started attacking me, I finally felt like I had a voice. I felt like I was like, okay, you're you know, literally so still okay in myself. Wow. And that's, and that's how it started. And that's why like I fire back at people on Twitter. I think it's important because for all those kids that feel like that right now, going through eighth grade, going through sixth grade, like they got to have an example that they can look at and say, oh, wow, this guy went through the exact same thing. And if you continue going down the right path, if you believe in yourself, if you feel good about yourself, like look where you can get. That's one of my, that's one of my main... Dude, you're you're doing one of my, it. To one a, of my main things that I want to pass on to You're doing it. I didn't I didn't know this people. about you, yeah. but you're doing it to a T. The authenticity that's shining through uh what you're doing is super apparent. Even, you know, not knowing that backstory and one I think that's the best shit I've ever heard you talk about because it's one it just makes you so much more likable understanding where I I wanted to get into the trolling and where it comes from yeah. because you are my, it's funny, my initial question, why you are the way you are, you just keep answering it. Because it's like, to understand where that stems from. Now, when you had that moment in the mirror, I could see you, just, I could see you almost putting yourself back there and remembering. Well, how old were you then? I was, uh, I was 17. It's a really mature uh, realization to have. I'm so fortunate that I had it. Most people never get to that moment. Dude, I'm, I mean, I'm... We're, we're, we're fucking trying to go through it and we're in our, you know, yeah. in our late twenties, early thirties, first, first even having those thoughts, Yeah, you know, so it's a really mature, I, I want to, I want to know how you even, did you just like, you didn't read books or listen to people. You just got there on your own. Yeah. You know, I, I do now. I read a ton now. I don't read. I, I listen to audible. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm always watching YouTube videos and educating myself and learning about, Right now, my biggest focus is like motivation of people. How do you organize a group of people to do something spectacular, whether it's in a team setting for athletics, whether it's in companies, whether it's in just your friend group, your family group, whatever. Um, but I didn't start that. I didn't, I didn't start loving like independent learning until well into my 20s. Me too. Um, so I, I learned in school when I was interested, but I wasn't passionate about it, mm -hmm. you know, so you kind of had to do it. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I just, I got there on my own. I think out of necessity, like it was a survival mechanism for me. Yeah. I just, you get, could have gone one of two ways right there. You get kicked so much, you get beat down so much. Like, what are you going to do? Quit mm -hmm. you either quit or you don't. Right. And if I, if I wasn't going to quit, then it's like, I got to find a solution to this. Right. And I think, you know, th there's a couple of things that, you know, really helped me out. Um, my family was extremely present and caring and supportive, mm -hmm. you know, um, but a lot of those lessons that I learned to internalize my process from an early age because I had to go do the work on my own because my dad wasn't there to take me to practice or whatever the case is. And my mom took me to practice and was, and was great, but my, my mom wasn't out playing catch with me. Right. You know, that's not, that's not her, her thing. So like, I had to internalize, oh, if I want this, I have to go find a way to do that and I have to rely on myself to do it. And so now that's, and my dad was an engineer, that's the other part of it. So he taught me this mindset of where are you now? Where do you want to be? Develop a process, then iterate. So you can apply that to anything in life. Like, I'm not popular right now. Know where I am. I want to be popular. I know where I'm going. How am I going to do that? Okay, well, the popular kids dress better. Like, let me get into, let me learn about how to dress better. Like, mm -hmm. if, if I could have gone that route, right? Right. But at that point in my life, that wasn't, that wasn't right. relevant for me. So I just looked at baseball and I said, I'm here. I don't throw hard enough to make the A team. So I need to throw harder. How am I going to throw harder? Let me go figure that out. I want to get into this. Um, the Texas Baseball Ranch, yep. where uh, that's where I first heard your name. I actually have been there. Really? Yes. I've been there. What I had, year? So I had Tommy John. Fuck was it? It was, I'm terrible with years. I've had a very weird life. Um, <laughs> It was it's a rock star life, baby. I want to say it was 2010. Okay. Um, heard your name there, coming off Tommy John. So I had a, I had a I, you might not even know, I had a, I had a pretty exceptional uh, freshman year at Duke as a pitcher. 
not, you know, I was very similar, like, to the way you're feeling. Like, I was, I was the best pitcher in Rhode Island. Yeah. You know, yeah. Not, not, that's not a baseball powerhouse by any means. But never highly touted, wasn't that hard of a thrower. Went to Duke, was a freshman All-American there as a closer. Still throwing, like, low 90s, um, really good breaking ball. Sophomore year, pop goes the weasel in the cape. I have my, my fucking elbow oh, pop. Oh, shit. In had Tommy John. Huh? Yeah, I was playing at Wareham. Um, and then uh, had a really tumultuous, like, climb back into it. Didn't go well. Like, rehabbed my balls off. Didn't work, really. My arm wasn't working the same. Got into, like, the outside ideologies of traditional, like, pitching, training, mm -hmm. And um, that Texas baseball ranch was a place that my dad like found, just kind of doing yeah. research and looking into it. And uh, went S same, the exact same way we found it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a lot of little similarities we have. But I remember going out there, and I heard your name a bunch. I think you had been there maybe a few years already, starting to work. Starting like '06, I think I started okay. there as like some yeah. sophomore high school yep. kid from California that threw yep. seventy poo. <laughs> but you, you fucking like you really transformed like it's it's a for those who are listening that aren't like really baseball people because i have a mix like I have, I have a baseball crowd that follows but then also i do other things um but to increase velocity is like it's a fucking it's one of those things like you could work every day for the rest of your life at it and like you might not get two mm -hmm. miles per hour it's a it's a challenging like it's not linear yeah, exactly. You can't say, I'll do A and add B and get C. Exactly. Like, it don't work like that. Exactly. Yeah. So you're kind of at the forefront of this, like, fits very well in your non-traditional yeah. story uh, and approach to things. But kind of at the forefront of this new wave training where, like, you do shit in a very non-traditional way. They had a very non-traditional approach to no throwing doubt. weighted balls, yeah. long tossing, maximum capacity, right? Yeah. Um, that happened out of necessity just trying to get, trying to throw harder. Yeah, that was it. That was the uh, that was the main impetus at that point because I looked at myself and I had I went I had a great freshman year on the freshman team, mm -hmm. you know, and in high school and uh, I I didn't get I made JV and other kids like jumped to varsity. Right. I was like, now what the hell? Like I was the best pitcher, and it just became very clear that it's like okay, okay, if I want to pitch in college, mm -hmm. if that's the next goal, right? Like, what does a college pitcher look like? Well, they throw. You know, of course, I, being in Southern California, I have a distorted view of what a college pitcher looks like. I'm watching Fullerton and guys are throwing 92 and yep. like nasty stuff. I'm going to UCLA games. I see Arizona State camp come in and like Mike Leake's throwing you know <laughs> 94 with pinpoint command. He's like mm -hmm. a big leaguer, but he's in college right. still. You know, like these are the types of talents that I'm seeing. So that was my my vision. I was mm -hmm. like, well, I gotta I throw 78 right now. I gotta throw 92 to be a college pitcher. Like, how am I? I got three years to do this. How am I gonna close that gap? Um, so I, I, I ended up actually taking lessons when I was about 10. I started with a guy named Jim Wagner. Um, Jim and I are close friends to this day. My dad actually still works with Jim at throw zone and like gives lessons to kids. Like Love he's it. a family friend and like, but Jim was instrumental in that because he started off, I was his first client as a pitching coach. Mm. He'd played in college. Um, he was actually was in the police force and was looking for something to like, to do different cause he knew he didn't want to go that direction. He's like, oh, I love baseball. I don't really know much about it. I ended up playing on a team with his younger son, or actually with both of his sons, Ryan and Josh. Uh, just happenstance in, in rec ball. Got to know him and jumped on board with him as his first client. But like the one thing about Jim, and we didn't have anything figured out back then. I mean, a lot of the stuff we did was wrong for right. sure, you know? But the one thing about Jim is that he was always looking to learn and improve his craft. So it fit perfectly with yeah. you know, our family ideology. So Jim en ended up actually... He knew uh, Alan Jager and Jim Vatcher, and he knew Perry Jager Husband, Bands. Jager Bands, exactly. And yep. it's like through that network, then when Ron and, and Jill started coming up with the, the baseball ranch and being a little bit more popular, like they networked and they met Alan and they met Jim. And then Jim's like, hey, like you should you know, check this place out. My dad actually had already heard of it by doing some research. But when Jim recommended it, he's like, oh, okay, now yep. we can trust that this is... So then we ended up going out there, but it was to solve the need of like, all right, how do I go from here? Cause like I've made this baseline. How do I go to the next level? And you I was fucking like, did it. 
velo. <laughs> and then it was, you know, and then it's just, it's a constant process, right? It's like velocity. Okay, now I got to throw strikes. All right, now I got to throw a better breaking ball. Now I got to understand how to pitch. Now I got to be able to stay on the field and be healthy. Now I got to get through a big league season. Now I got to, you know, right. all these different things. And it's just, an, it's a never, you know, it's a never ending process. Absolutely. To this day. Yeah. To this day. So let's shift a little bit. Um, do I get any, hey, Steve, do I get any credit for the Cy Young? <laughs> I want, and I want to, I want to tell you why. So I put you in the Belina Cup. Yep. Had a great showing. Yeah. Almost like, almost like you did in baseball. You're not even a beer pong player or a drinker at all, really, right? That was, I think that was my second game. But the first game of exactly. the Galena Cup was my second game of beer ever. pong ever. By, by like four days later, like I was getting updates from your, from your agent, like, yeah, Trevor's really getting good. He's been practicing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He had a whole operation at the house. Absolutely. Uh, had a tryout for the, for the partner. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but I know you were fucking pissed when you lost. So I feel like I got a little bit of credit for just going on, getting it. I had to troll you. You're the baseball yeah. troll guy. Yeah. No, so the Blinder Cup's right there behind you. That's great. It, it digs. And I take know? a little bit of credit for the Cy Young. I it's think like I a knife a little... that just constantly, just <laughs> constantly just, digging. This whole podcast just <laughs> twisting. Constantly. Every time you see my face. No, I love it. And it was, it was a blast having you on. Um, how did you pull off the the Budweiser? You're not even a drinker, but you got a Budweiser. What is it? A, just like a partnership or they're just sending you stuff? What's right, going it's, on with it's, that? A, it's a great working relationship right yeah. now. Like they, they enjoy a little bit of, you know, social trolling and, and yeah. these kind of like forward thinking ways of, of right. marketing, you know, I'm obviously super into that. I know you're into that. I wanted to, I wanted to get, you know, get to that at some point with yeah. you, but uh, yeah, man, I, uh, it started organically and that's how the, the best things happen, right? right? Like, uh, Sonny Gray had, had, he made his fifth start and I, because of the way the rotation had flipped around and stuff like that, I actually basically got skipped one time through. And so he had five starts and I had only had three. Mm -hmm. And so he sets this record of, uh, the, the most strikeouts for a Reds pitcher through the first five games with like some, you know, he, I think he had like 40 Right. and I was at three starts and had like 36 or something mm -hmm. like i'm clearly going to beat you um <laughs> so i said that the reds tweeted about it and i just quoted them with you know you know the saying like hold my beer right it's mm -hmm. like just this internet sensation you know so of i course. said i quote tweeted and i said hold my beer and then you know budweiser saw it mm -hmm. and like to their credit were super smart to just jump in the fray and they're like you had us at beer and they came up with it uh, and morgan was actually you know super involved in the whole process going back and forth with them like kind of putting this together so it was like collaborative from their side like they had some ideas and morgan had some ideas on our side and like for those who don't know morgan like handles all my marketing yep. like all the stuff that you see me do on shout the field out morgan. yeah shout out to morgan uh all the stuff you see me do on the field is like collaborative effort like hey what about this idea what about that idea okay i know how to make that i can do that this game whatever and, right and all that so i say hold my beer budweiser says you had us a beer and morgan immediately is in contact with them and like well if you strike out if you set the record over your next two starts, I think I need like 11 strikeouts total or something to get mm -hmm. there. If you if you set the record, then like we'll send you this can, right. and it is like the the Cincinnati Buds. Right. And so I was like, oh okay, so I can riff off of that, right? So it's like I'm gonna go set the record, and then I'm gonna promote this so that all the Cincinnati fans like understand what it is, mm -hmm. and we're gonna rebrand ourselves because we were struggling at this time of the year. Like we yeah. were a bad baseball team, you know. Like we're gonna rebrand ourselves as the Cincinnati Buds. The Cincinnati Reds have sucked, <laughs> but the Cincinnati Buds are gonna be electric, you know. Love that. And uh, so then it was like it, I started talking to my catchers about. It. I started talking to the team about. It. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna be the Buds. Like, give me nine days. We're gonna give me eight days. We're it's fine. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're just get to eight days with a chance. And, like the Buds are gonna take off, you know. You caught so a it, really. You caught a not to cut you off. You caught yeah. a. It seems like you caught a crazy wave in Cincinnati. Like you got Cleveland was a little limiting for you in yeah. ways. And you get to Cincinnati and you could just let it fly and be yourself. Yeah, I mean, Cincinnati, the, the organization did a, a fantastic, they do a fantastic job of making everyone feel like, hey, like you're going to be your best player when you're your best self. So facts. just to so be yourself, you know, that's and that's, that's something that is so important. Um, so, yeah, it ended up, you know, I decided, to, I came up with a thing, like, I'm going to write buds. I need five strikeouts this game. So every strikeout, I'm going to write a letter, B-U-D-S. And then when I get the fifth one, I'm just going to, like, underline it and, like, chug a beer that was my I, favorite one yeah i told i told my teammate that i'm like yeah when i get it i'm gonna chug a fake beer and like you're not gonna do that i'm like you can't <laughs> tell me that i'm not gonna do something because i'm 100 percent gonna do it i ain't scared are you actively i know i mean i know you are i know the answer to this question you're you're actively trying to make like the pitcher celly like the celebration like a thing 100 percent. 
I mean, my buddy, you know, I'm good buddies with Strowman. Kind of, kind of, kind of in the same world. Does a little shimmy and little things, but it seems like you're actively like, like almost like a touchdown. Like when you come with different moves after different things. Hundred percent. Why not? What do you? I mean, you tune in to Sports Center to watch the end zone celebrations. Look at the fan reaction when they tried to take those away. It was there was such a yeah. revolt that like it came back in like a year or two. Absolutely. And now it's a, it's a thing. It's a huge marketing opportunity. Those are viral clips. You know, so my my intention is every time I pitch, like I have I, I don't get to play every day. You know, I'm yeah. not I'm not on the field. I don't get to make a spectacular play, you know, two days in a row. I don't get to hit a big home run. Like I get one day every fifth. Hopefully I, this year I can pitch every fourth. But like, that's Are you trying really, to do that? Hopefully, hopefully, yeah, if someone lets me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know I get one opportunity to like get myself out there. Yeah. So like I have this big opportunity, a lot of FaceTime. So like, how am I going to get shared? How am I going to get people online to like talk about this to like spread my my brand, my reach? You know, and it's like okay, well we can do shoes. Let's 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 get like popular moments and and put them on shoes. So we went into the season with like three or four like cultural things like kind of planned out, right? We were going to have Jackie Robinson day. So, you know, we have Jackie Robinson, UCLA cleats, perfect blend. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm a Bruin myself and you know, the whole deal. Yeah. Um, and it's like, we're in Cincinnati. What's something that's like the Cincinnati fans are going to love. Well, like Harambe was at the Cincinnati zoo. And like, I know it's year old meme or whatever, but like people in Cincinnati are going to love that. Right. So we had, we had a couple of these ideas and Morgan and I went back and forth on and kind of planned out. Mm -hmm. And then it was like current events. So it's like, okay, we're going to send our designer four pairs of blanks just to hold, hold on to. And then like, you know, the Joe Kelly thing happens. Mm -hmm. And so we make the free Joe Kelly cleats, you Genius. know, and then like Joe Burrow gets drafted into Cincinnati. And it's like, all right, let's make Bengal cleats, you know, and we're just kind of riffing off. That's one way that we do it. But the, you know, another way is like you do some sort of celebration, you, you know, that, it's shareable. It's a little bite-sized piece that can be a viral clip, you know? Uh, the, the beer chug is everywhere. You know, I, I really, like, this. the idea came about in spring training when, um, you know, I, I was signaling to the, to the hitter, like, what's coming for Love that. It. There's a backstory to it. It wasn't about the Astro, all this different stuff, but, like, There's everyone picked up and said, oh, this is about the Astros. Oh, he's... And it got, it got, I mean, it got millions of views in, in the span of 24 hours, you know? Yep. And like that really clicked it into me. And I was like, oh, like if I can replicate that, I can be the most shared, the most viral guy out there for a bunch of different reasons. Like Morgan and I are going back and forth. I'm like, oh, well, what if we did this? And what if we did that? It was actually like the send it shirt. You know, it was, was Morgan's idea. She's like, hey, you know, I mean, this, this going back a year ago, like, She's like, oh, you know, I don't understand why hitters, you know, when they hit a home run, you know, they come in the dugout and, you know, Bregman has the stare. Like, they have these little celebrations, right? Well, like, from a marketing perspective, why don't they just open up their jersey and it's like your ad here or, like, some brand that's right there that, like, pays them for that creative opportunity, you know? And so then I had that in the back of my head. And so when I thought of, like, the, I'm like, okay, I'm going back to, uh, to Kansas City. Last time I was here, I yeeted a ball over center field. Like, I got a shirt about it. I've made light of it. Like, wouldn't it be great to just like play that off at some, you know? And uh, really interesting what you're doing, honestly. I mean, I, I've heard you speak about it a little bit, and it's, it's, it's almost so obvious. I can't believe other other people haven't in the world of baseball haven't seen this as an opportunity. It's, as you're, it's scary though, right? Because what is. if? So, for instance, like, what do you remember about the Cincinnati Buds game? You remember the beer chug, right? Yeah. That's, you don't. You don't remember the fact that I gave up three homers and lost the game. I don't. And. But people are scared of that. You know, people are like, well, if I celebrate and then they beat me, I'm going to look like a fool. Or like I'm, my teammates are going to think, you know, yeah. whatever. And it's, it's a hurdle that you have to like, you have to be strong enough mentally to say like, I'm willing to accept that my teammates might be mad at me for like losing a game because of this. But you, you want to know what? I, I'd be willing to bet that the overwhelming majority of big league baseball players weren't bullied. Yeah. I would guess. So back to why you are the way you are. Yeah. You don't care. I, right. I have, I have freedom because I know I'm going to be okay and I'm okay with myself, regardless if any of you like me or not, because I've been there before. It's just so fucking obvious. I live obvious. my life there, yeah. you know? Um, so I, can, I do a lot of these things to try to, again, try to like lead the way and show like, hey, 
This yeah. is a thing. You can do this. Other people can do this. It should be accepted. I wanted to get into the whys next. Yeah. Um, it seems like Steve's shedding all over me. <laughs> <laughs> Ruining my fucking outfit, Steve. Um, <laughs> the whys of like, look, you're, you're about to be mega rich. Let's throw that out there. You're, you're Cy Young. You're, you, we'll get into what you're thinking or where you're going next and whatever. There's, you're, it's all in the air right now, right? Yeah. But we know that's going to happen, yep. right? It's not about the money, is it? No. The branding and, and the attention. Now, look, from a guy who didn't get attention in high school and, and, and middle school maybe missed out on, hey, why, doesn't, you know, why aren't they looking at me? And then who've transformed, put in the work, transformed your life to now be the guy who's the fucking center of attention yeah. in an organic way. So to me, looking at it from the outside and hearing you talk, maybe that's an underlying pushing, pushing, you know, a part of what's making the engine turn so hard for you in this realm. But it seems as though there's also like a level of servitude or service um, that you're trying to both give the game but also like younger uh, or just peers even. Yeah. Um, what would you say in the most honest form of this answer? Like why, why, why are you putting yourself through all the work that you're doing, the extra work, the attention, putting your neck on the line? There's obviously, you're explaining the reasons why in a good, the positive way, but like where, what do you think the driving force is internally for you, like genuinely? Uh, I didn't have someone to do that for me in many ways my parents did a fantastic job you know mm. i can't give them enough praise but there's certain things your parents can't give you absolutely you know and there's certain information the, the way it started the first thing was like the information about baseball there's certain information that i didn't have access to you know i looked up at barry zito and he's my favorite pitcher forever because of his curveball mm -hmm. but i couldn't talk to barry about how to throw his curveball until I was 12 years old, I met him. I had the opportunity to meet Barry and ask him about his curveball. I met him at an Alan Jager long toss camp. And uh, I was so fortunate for that opportunity. It, like, it made such an impact on my life. And when I got to professional baseball, and I have all this knowledge because I, I just learn and I, that's, what I, that's all I do. I'm like, well, for those kids who may be getting bullied, I don't want to see someone go through the same things I went through from like mm -hmm. being bullied, from being you know, ostracized by teammates, from whatever the case is. I was like, if I can share that knowledge back with them somehow, maybe they have that same moment that I had with Barry where they're like, wow, I have inspiration to, to move on. And that's honestly, that's the reason I got on Twitter back in, in uh, right at the end of my college cool. career. It's like, I can give information back to people. You mm -hmm. know, this is like this new information sharing service. Um, but really it stems from like, I hated, I hated feeling bad about myself for, so long because of outside pressure uh, and outside, I guess the outside feeling of me, um, how other people felt about yeah. me influenced how I felt about myself. And I don't want that. I don't want other kids to go through that. And I, I see inefficiencies in things. Uh, that's how I've been trained my entire life is to look at, you know, again, yeah. where are you now? Where do you want to be? Well, the natural gap between there is an inefficiency. It's a problem to be solved. So when I look at industry, I look at the baseball industry and I'm like, there are so many things that could be better. I look at like, business and i'm like oh this industry could be revolutionized that industry could be like there's you could go this way like what rachel uh, my agent rachel is doing with her agency and like she's really the only agent that's active on social media like that's such a competitive mm -hmm. advantage right like what morgan's doing with with the branding side of things like why hasn't anyone ever you know worn these cleats and promoted it like this like so you have two women on your 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 main players are two two women three. which is all Three women. Three. My which agent, is also extremely unorthodox. Yeah, my agent, Rachel, uh, marketing, Morgan, and then my, like, PR and, um, like, public strategy and stuff like that uh, is Mel. Love and that. They all do a, a fantastic job. Love that. Yeah. Love that. It's, uh, it's, it's why, I mean, I'm, I've, when I've had baseball players on the podcast, I've always brought your name up. Because I, because I, I really do, I, I like to know their genuine I could even even if they don't say anything, I could tell. You, yeah, I could tell right away. Yeah, how they feel about it, you know. And um, I think there's a certain level of. Uh, I don't think anyone. <laughs> I don't think anyone who is involved in the game whatsoever, or even paying attention, can argue any of the points that you're making. It's more so. I think there's a little bit of. 
Jealousy isn't the right word. It's more so like, it's, it's more so like, how is he, how does he have the energy to do this? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, uh, Clevenger was like, seems exhausting. That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know yeah. that's your buddy too, but he's like, seems uh, yeah. exhausting, you know? And it's like, what I, reason I'm bringing this up is like, you have a, uh, and when you're used to like, oh, I, I learn all the time. That's all I do. I, I want to be, I, I'm pushing myself to be more like that. Like, I don't even want to sit down and watch a fucking anything unless it's something I'm, I'm learning from now. And then if I do have days or nights or a string of a weekend, you know, I have a way different life than you. I, we, we, we get after <laughs> it a little bit. But um, which I personally feel like that's part of the work. And it sounds a little crazy, but like me getting fucked up on a Friday, running into this girl, 100%. having people back here, it feeds what's going on in the 100%. microphone. And you gotta have music. you gotta have something to talk about. It's the vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But uh, I feel that I'm okay with all that. But I'll, I, I'm personally, as I've like, I'm way more. I, I'm I got a way later start than you in like this idea of like constantly learning, growing, and and just like there's a there's a certain um, life energy aspect that I'm trying to like f I'm trying to pull more life energy from whatever the source may be. Yeah. Um, it seems like you have a ton of life energy, even with all the success and, and just having the career you've had, which is a long baseball career already in the big leagues and just the journey you've been on. Um, where, what do you, what's your biggest source? Is it just remembering the days when you didn't get the, you didn't get the love and attention? And I think, I think a lot of it's that, yeah. I think, uh, I'm, I'm extremely competitive Yeah, and I, I think some of that's been kind of built in and, and baked in you know but i think a lot of it's kind of natural i think i'm just i just am naturally competitive yeah and uh part of that is like i want to compete on the field but part of it is competing like interpersonally you yeah. know like oh you had the first laugh you know you you made fun of me in high school but like i'm ah. gonna i'm gonna bury you so far in success in life that like I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to win that. And since you attacked me first, I have no problem piling on and piling on and piling on because you started this, mm -hmm. you know? And so not that I'm going and then attacking people, but I look at it from a success standpoint, like, Oh, you were popular. And now you just served me a, a meal, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to tip you a little extra. Mm -hmm. It was like a, like a jab, yeah. you know, I see you doing like, it. And you I'll, have... I'll tip you a hundred percent tonight. Cause like you could use it more than I can right now. And like, you said all those things about me in high school and like, now what? what do you personally what do you, go what do you back got? and do shit like that ever? Like go back to the hometown, throw some money around and just be a... Sometimes. Yeah. Um, the, the, the ones that make me feel best are the ones where like, I may know a server that's struggling or something, you know, and I can do something to help them. Yeah. So I think at the base level of me, like I enjoy helping people. Yeah. But there are definitely times when I'm just like, you know, I, there's this one experience in Hawaii. Um, so I go, uh, 2011, I just got drafted. I go out, I'm going to sound like the, the biggest douche right oh. now, but like it's, it kind of points to like how I see things. Right. So I get drafted. I'm out there with my buddies playing summer ball and, uh, we're on the beach one day, just hanging out and, uh, end up talking to these two girls and hit, hit it off, mm -hmm. and, like exchange numbers. Like, hey, let's hang out. Let's hang out. Whatever. Mm -hmm. We text them like, yeah, meet us at this club at this time. Like, great. So we go there. Um, we're waiting like they're a little bit late. We wait like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Don't know. We text them like, don't hear back for a little bit. And I'm, I'm 20 at this time. Like I, I've never really been in this scene. So I don't pick up on like, I'm not aware Social of my, cues. yeah, I, I don't, I don't see it. Right. Yeah. Um, so call them, get a voicemail. Uh, like that's odd. So we're just, me and my buddy are just hanging out talking, right. you know, hour and a half about goes by and they're like, yeah, we, we uh, got out of the house late. We had to stop by and pick up a friend. We'll be there in 20 minutes. Okay. Like, all right. So two hours end up going by, right? Long story short, we end up finding out that they sent us to a gay strip club and we never went inside and we were just standing outside waiting for them, right? We find out this is a gay strip club and like, they aren't going to show up. Like, okay, it is what it is. It's kind of funny. Like we got a story to tell, right? Mm -hmm. But now in my head, I'm just like, that's disrespectful, mm -hmm. you know? So like, fuck you. <laughs> and so I was there for like three more days, right? So I knew from talking to them on the beach, like I knew where they worked. I knew what hours they worked, yeah. right? So I decided to go in and uh, and get him back. And so I get his entire, my buddy's entire right. summer ball team, 30 people. Mm -hmm. And we make like, 
uh, think because you have to be under six people, so there's no automatic tip, right? So I was like, okay, we're gonna get uh, whatever that is, you know, five tables or or, or six tables, right? Mm -hmm. And we called in. I'm like, hey, I'm so and so's friend. Um, you know, uh, we're coming in. We like we'd love to have her server and whatever. So we requested her and her friend as servers. <laughs> And we go in there with uh, with 30 people, mm -hmm. but you can't, not all as a party, we each have individual tables. So right. we, there's no automatic tip. So the plan was to like have them serve and like flirt with them and whatever. And then no one was going to tip them. Mm -hmm. That was just a big F you. Mm -hmm. It turns out when we get there, um, she had called earlier that day and requested the night off. Uh, and so she wasn't there, even though like that was her work schedule, right? So now I'm sitting there like uh, I'm not letting it's my last night in town. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm letting, not letting this you know, go. Right? So so we end up having dinner there. Everyone eats and then the whole deal. Yeah. And uh, so I left a dollar bill. Um, I left it with the the server. I was like, hey, can you give this to so and so? Like I'm a friend. It's my last night in town. Like can you give this to her? Mm -hmm. Whatever. She's like, oh yeah, sure. I figured it didn't get to her or whatever. But it was right. just kind of this like throwaway effort. Well, on the dollar bill, I wrote my name and I said, Google me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and i felt like the biggest like it was like the biggest douche move i'm not yeah. proud of it but like this just it's one of these stories is like this is this is uh. why so a year and a half later <laughs> my buddy from college uh my catcher stevie rodriguez actually i threw him in he's like love stevie um and uh he texts me out of the blue he's in minor leagues at this point in texas mm -hmm. texts me out of the blue he's like dude I haven't talked to him in a couple months, right? And he's like, dude, you can't be leaving me, leaving Google me dollar bills for waitresses in Hawaii. I'm like, no <laughs> shit. She freaking got it. Like, dude, you got to tell me. So he's like, that's such a, that's like the biggest douche move. I'm like, I tell, I explain the story to him. And he's yeah. like, oh, I get it. I get it. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, how, like, do you know her? And he's like, oh yeah, I was in like, happened to be in the same city and like met her and her friends like and way, like, yeah. you know, what, whatever the case is. I'm like, damn, baseball is such a small world, man. But like, it is. Even little things like that, you know, that's like the, the trolling in me. It because, speaks to how you're, how you're wired. Yeah. It's just a younger yeah. version of you. Yeah, unrefined. <laughs> we'll be right back with You Never Know, You Know What I Mean, right after this urination break. Hey, how are you? John Kilmer here. Now, there seems to be a supplement for everything these days, for getting bigger muscles, for getting your vitamins, for making your dick hard. But there aren't many supplements for something as important as hydration. Now, you have, your, you have your sugary sports drinks, but if you're a health nut like me, hell, if you're just a human being, Liquid IV is the supplement for you. I use it daily. They come in these fantastic small packages. You can, you can hear the powder in there. This, we're gonna we're gonna take a break to do the liquid IV chant here. Now all you do is take this little packet here of powder, you put it in a bottle of water. It is the equivalent to two to three bottles of water in hydration. Now, especially this time of year, uh, it's flu season. I call it ass pounding season, but it's flu season. You're getting sick. Hydration is one of the things that are overlooked, especially in, in cold weather. It's harder to know you're dehydrated. So I strongly suggest you step up your hydration with Liquid IV. We have a tremendous offer for you today. If you go to liquidiv.com, use promo code YNK, you're going to get 25% off your entire order. That's a huge discount. Liquidiv.com, promo code YNK and get 25% off your order. They have awesome flavors. They have apple pie. They have guava. They have watermelon. I could go on for days. They have their normal hydration multipliers. They have their immunity immunity boost right there, support. They have uh, they have energy supplements. They have it all. I strongly suggest hop on liquidiv.com and check it out today and tell them Steve sent you. OMG, you guys. I know I sound like a broken record over here, but at the Stevenson Ranch, we promote products that we proudly believe in. And a lot of people don't know this, but I've actually been shaving Mike's ball sack for the past six years. Some would call it a travesty, I call it a privilege. And with a guy like him, he's just got an extreme bat wing. I mean, that thing stretches for miles, very hard to trim. Until our friends at Manscaped sent us a lawnmower 3.0. Shaving Mike's balls has never been easier. We're talking no nicks. We're talking the most quintessential razor for your dick, your balls, your entire body even. Now, if you're a guy that likes to fuck on the weekends and you haven't heard of Manscaped, what have you been, living under a rock? 
Manscaped has a million products for men. Besides the Lawnmower 3.0, they get things like ball deodorant. They got things like ball toner. They have, uh, I don't have one yet. I can't wait to get it. It's called the Weed Whacker. You shove that thing right up your nose, you get the hair out of there too. We have a tremendous offer for you now during the holiday season. If you go to manscaped.com and use promo code YNK, you're going to get 20% off your entire order. One more time, that's manscaped.com. Promo code YNK and get 20% off your entire order. Tell them Steve sent you. I want to I want to get into a little bit more like the mental side of, of your whole, just your approach to things, right? Because you're, you're very matter of fact and you're very calculated. And as you've spoke to a bunch about problem inefficiencies and what's the best route to fill in the void, et cetera. Um, I saw a tweet. You said about after you won the Cy Young, I pointed to the Bolina Cup. This is my Cy Young. <laughs> this is my Cy Young. Raining back to back, This is right? literally all I have. Raining, right? Yeah, absolutely. Two-time defending. Yeah. Oh, no, no. That was only one. Only, only one? one? Yeah, and then we have, a, uh, I thought you... we have an underground Bolina Cup that we're doing oh. with fans, but we're flying them out here. Okay, so okay. if I win that one, okay. we'll be... All right. I thought, I thought there was... A, but you guys, you had a, some sort of beer pong like tournament or something before that, right? That was I thought. The, that was the, was that the one. first one? We're, we're I'm, just no. That was me and Post. Uh, I'm buddies with Post, and that's where the whole Bolina Cup. That like yeah. we just were on like a bender after one of his shows in L. A. And like nine in the morning, like we had been drinking beer, <laughs> playing beer pong all night. We're like, I turned to him. Yeah. I'm like, Are we the world champions of the world? We have to be. Like we, no one plays more beer pong than us, and we just were winning all night. So we literally went and got that made on Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, um, but sick. yeah, we we played a ton of uh, like high stakes beer pong in my yeah. house, and, and so I'm the undisputed slash disputed <laughs> slash disputed beer pong champion of the world anyways um you had a tweet that was like i used to have a picture of the cy young as my background i still do yeah as now is it yours not yet because i haven't gotten mine yet love that but uh yeah show the camera yeah there it is you got that it's jim palmer cy young look it at says, that uh, it says make pitches on it you're just like so 10 years what i'm getting at here is like are, are you aware of like you know uh the law of attraction and manifestation mm -hmm. are you on that wave when did that happen and how how much does it play a part in your overall approach to life so i i know of those things i and i when i learned about them i recognized that i already had been implementing some of them you know so i don't know it in like a formal way where Likewise. i read this and like i attempt to implement it um but i've always been a firm believer in just stating what you're going to do because uh, stepping back to the texas baseball ranch one of the things that they used to say there is like once you decide what you're going to do and you tell the world what you're going to do the world will get out of your way because that's a that takes a lot of confidence to like I am going to do this and put yourself yes. on record and most people shy away from that Absolutely. so if you walk into a room and you're like I'm gonna do this other people are like uh you know and, and you can just it's back to putting your neck on the you line. know absolutely it's like, and it's one of the things I respect so much about Conor McGregor I, I look up, I look up to a, a lot of what he does now whatever I'll, you know, there's there's some issues there that I don't know about yeah. that I can't I can't speak to and judge you know but from a strictly like an athletic performance, like the things that that man has been able to accomplish are ridiculous from a branding while being the, the best dude to do it in the world, mm -hmm. right? At the time and being a successful entrepreneur and businessman and like this whole like brand and aura that he created in like two years. It was like the flash of a pan, you know? But he just said, mm -hmm. like, I am going to do this. Mm -hmm. And then he went and did it. Like Jake Arrieta in, I think, 2015 had a tweet before a, a wild card matchup with the Pirates where a Pirates fan was trolling him. And he's like, you can say whatever you want to try to get in my head. Just know it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And then he went out there and threw a CG shutout to eliminate the Pirates. You know, like those moments are the ones that stick in your head. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali, I am the greatest. Mm -hmm. If you ask anyone right now, like the vast majority of people, who's the best boxer of all time? Muhammad Ali. Right. But was he the best boxer of all time? Skill standpoint, you'd have to put Floyd there. Yeah. You know, but you don't know Floyd is the best of all time because Floyd never said I'm the best of all time. Didn't feel the same even if he did. Right. You're right though. You're right. It's uh it's um there's a huge level of risk from a personal standpoint when you state those things publicly. No doubt. And you have a public following. Um, 
but it's uh it makes it even more as you said it just makes it even more attractive once once they go out and do it it's just it's, so it much puts pressure on you right absolutely like it holds you accountable yeah a lot of people will sit with their friends and be like yeah i'm gonna want to say young like, I, i'm gonna do it but then when it gets tough no one knows that so they can shrink back and say like oh you know i'm just trying to help my teammates and win and like at some point it gets you know it gets beat out of you by some of the failures and that's right. kind of that like downward sawtooth that we were absolutely. talking about earlier you put yourself out there and you tell the world i'm going to win three cy youngs and i'm going to be a hall of famer like when you are in the gym at eight o'clock at night and everyone's left and it's very easy to be like i'm hungry i want to go home and you remember that like i've said this publicly what are you going to do? Absolutely. You know, it, it, it puts pressure on you. You say like, I can pitch every fourth day and like, I'm, I can be good doing this mm -hmm. and I get an opportunity to do it in a must win game to put our team in the postseason. in a must win game. I have to dominate to like, I have one start to win the Cy Young, this thing that I've wanted for 10 years. Right? Get it. And like, I got to show out today because it's my last opportunity to make that statement. And I got to show out today because everyone on my team is looking at me saying, you're the guy that's going to, like, you're our guy. Put us in the postseason. And I have all this stuff in my head of, like, well, I faced this team three times this year already. Like, they know what I'm going to do. I have this nervous energy. I couldn't sleep the night before. I had to get up and, like, walk, like, for 20 minutes before the game out on the field. Like, just, to, I, 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 I couldn't eat, you know? Like, I have all this pressure on me. But if you know how to handle that, like, it carries you mm -hmm. and it, it like elevates you to another level of focus to another level of performance and you channel it if you can get good get good at channelling that it's like this adrenaline rush that you've it's just like i mean, I mean you know the feeling mm -hmm. being out there in the moment you know it's Absolutely. like it's this it's this euphoric high like you you black out you don't know what's Absolutely. going on you're buzzing right and at some point like you can't just get that by showing up to the field every day. Mm -hmm. Like there has to be a little extra. Right. So if it's like calling out another player on the team, like, yo, dude, I'm going to punch you out today on Twitter. And it's like, oh shit. Now when I face him, I'm going to look like the biggest idiot ever. So your he, purpose. Like, so there's a little bit of an undertone of like, you'll, you'll, you'll reach into that bag of trolls. And those decisions are a little bit driven by like getting an, an, a little boost of adrenaline and like a boost of like pressure. A little bit. It's a little bit driven by that. It's a little bit driven by like, I've built this brand for myself of like pushing the boundary, you know? So that it's, it's all kind of integrated. But at the end of the day, like the most important thing is the performance on the field. Yeah. And like for me to be at my best, the stakes have to be the highest. I have to have that nervous energy. That's cool. I like I'll, I'll run through a wall. Like when I'm like that, it does it like bases loaded, nobody out. Like I'm going to, I'll get out of it. You mm -hmm. know? And I think you said like during that game against the Brewers, my last game was like, First and third, you know, there's an error and then a little bloop or something like that. It's first and third, nobody out. And like, we're up by one or something at the time. And it's like, this is not cut in time. And it's like, I, f I could find that next gear. Like, okay, I punched your ass out. Like, I'm going to punch the next guy. Okay, I'm going to punch this guy out. Like, hmm. and it just like, it gets in it's those big moments. That's what like, separates the greats, you, man. You see it, you know, you see Jordan do it. You see like, they, they sense like, all right, this is the moment. Like, this is when I can put the dagger in the heart, like, and they they have that extra, yeah. extra little gear, you know. When you get out, uh, I always wondered this because I remember when I pitched. So I, I experienced it was after my injury, and I was I, I was just not the same. But I remember I remember the feeling of there'd be slight feelings of like doubts that pop up mm. when I would throw. Th two balls in a row and it felt weird or like, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't feel like I had command of this. Are you at your level ever experiencing doubt on the field? Yeah. You are all the time. That's one of the, it's one of like, if you could get rid of it, you'd think that getting rid of it would be ideal. Right. But yeah. it's not like you have to have that interesting because it's, it, it keeps you, it's like an animal that's always in danger of being eaten. Right. Like you're constantly on alert. Like you're always in danger. So you're like, your senses are heightened. So if you're never in danger on the field, if you roll out there and you're like, yeah, I'm going to be good, you let your guard down, and then all of a sudden it happens. And it's like, wow, I just gave up four in the first. Shit. Okay, well, I'm good. So I just keep, you know, like I don't ever want to get to that point. 
I've been there before. Like when I'm really struggling, it's almost like a protective mechanism where it's like, okay, well, I'll just, just keep pushing, it. keep, just get through it. You know, I hate, uh, just, I don't get upset. I don't, I don't feel anything. And that's what drives me the most insane is like, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't in it today. I didn't compete. I wasn't there. Like I can control that. And I didn't give my best effort, whatever. I give up 10 in the first, right. You know, but like even games where I pitch well, like I get mad at myself because like I wasn't there today. Like that, like the, the results were fine, but like that wasn't, that's cool. That's not acceptable because I know that I do that next time and it's going to blow up type of thing, you know? So that doubt, when you, when you get in a situation like that and you're like, well, can I do this? You know, can I pitch on short rest against a team that I just faced that like, can't, can I do this? Mm. You know, there's doubt there. Hey, can I get out of this base? I got myself in this jam and if I don't get out of it, we're going to lose and like not make the playoffs and like, the odds are stacked against me. Like, but, but it heightens you, you know, it like it, or, or it tanks you one of the two. And that's really where you find the best performers. Like which way do exactly. you go in those moments? Exactly. Exactly. Now, is there a part of you ever, is there a part of you ever that looks out the window and is like, because you're, like, I talk to athletes about this a lot. You're fucking young, healthy, and uh, wealthy, right? These are all things that more or less, more or less dictate, like, happiness on earth. Like, what most people are looking for. Like yeah. they, they wanna they wanna be in they wanna be in the limelight, which you guys are to you know, whatever extent you may be. They wanna be financially free, free from debt, free from that side of worry. Um, and my question to you is like for, as somebody who just as you said, you're just so dedicated to the work, do you ever doubt that? Now, what I mean by that is, do you ever just like look out the window and be like, yo, I could buy the biggest house on that fucking mountain? And just do whatever the fuck I want and like go fly here and do this and do that. Are there ever just in your head or in your heart like, hmm, I wonder what that would be like? Like, and you're an extreme case. Like, you're an extremely dedicated to the game guy. Sounds like since you were 12. Yeah. So, is there ever a point where you look out looking at the fucking stars or you're just like thinking about life on a scale outside of the bubble of baseball and Trevor Bauer and yep. thinking like, Hey, like, you know, what else is going on in this fucking planet? What else is there to yeah. do? You know, like, and not to say that I know you're, you're very much so diversifying and you have businesses and you're entrepreneurial and you have all these other aspirations within this bubble of what you're doing, which is really all anyone can do. You know, you can't do everything, but there's, there's a certain angst I get and I've lived a life, very rare life, you know, but there's an angst I get, and I, and I, and I always ask people in, sitting across from me in one way or another about this, because it's just like, there's an angst I get when I like look around, I'm just like, what else is going on out there, you know? And like, yeah. I could do this or that, and when you have this freedom that life you've earned, or you've, you could argue you haven't earned, you, you were put on earth with this brain and this body and these skills and this determination, right. you know, you've cultivated it, but a lot of it's a gift from who yeah. knows, you know? So. My question to you is like, does that even, does that even matter to you? Do you even think like that yet? Are you even there? Like, does that is that a factor in, in I'm, internally? I'm, I'm starting to get there a little bit, um, but I, I wouldn't consider myself a happy person. Mm. I don't think I'm unhappy, but I kind of live my. I define it this way a lot with baseball, and it kind of applies to my life because my life for so long has been baseball. They've been the same, you know. I live my life with in a neutral to negative state because my expectations are so high for myself that when I achieve them, that's what I should be doing. So that's neutral. And when Sheesh. I don't, it's negative. So I, a lot of, like I actually had the nickname for a while in Cleveland, I was Eeyore. Like I carry around <laughs> my, my rain cloud with me because, you know, <laughs> And like after they, they made a shirt, you know, like yeah. ask me about my rain cloud and it's That's like, funny. you know, my, you know, the whole deal. So, <laughs> um, but like seeing that, I was like, man, like they're right. You know, like a lot of times criticisms are hard to hear in the moment, but like you, you glean some information from them. I'm like, damn, you're right. So then I started thinking about it really in the last couple of years. I'm like, what do I, you know, what do I like to, what do I want to do? You know, if, if my baseball career ended today, I get a car crash or you know, something happens, yeah. I can't play anymore. 
what would I do? And I don't know the answer to that. People are like, oh, you should, excuse me, you should take a, you should take a, uh, a month off, you know, you should, you should, after the season, go relax and go do something that you like to do. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. What do I like to do? Uh, I, I don't know. Like if I had a month to go do something, you know, like the question of, Hey, you got a week, you're going to die in a week and you can do whatever money's not an issue. Right. Like, what are you going to do? I'm like, Oh, I'd probably go to the gym and like lift and <laughs> do some like, long I, I, don't, I don't know what I do, you yeah, know? And so I'm trying what, to, I'm trying to figure this out right now. Like, what do I, what do I like, you know, outside of, of baseball? I, I know I love learning, right? Like, so learning would a hundred percent be part of it, but there's so many things you can learn about. You can learn about culture. You can learn about people. You can learn about job. You can learn about the robot, whatever. There's tons of things. So what would I go learn about? What would I go experience? What would I go do? And I don't know the answer to that. And mm -hmm. I think that the next big step for me as a person is to figure out, like, how is Trevor Bauer the person happy? Like, what does happiness look like for me? And how do I then achieve that? How do I get there? It's like the next process to, to, well to figure said. out. And um, I think a lot of it starts with, you know, having the right people around you and, and sourcing ideas. You, know, you have the right team there. You have people that, that bring out the, the sides of you where you're like, wow, I laughed tonight for three hours and I don't remember the last time I did that. Like, let me learn well, why, you know, well, I was around good people and good conversation, but we were talking about, you know, nothing to do with business and it's just life. I'm like, okay, I enjoy that. Like, let me do that a little bit more. Let me find opportunities to, you know, Maybe instead of having all my people remote, I bring everybody into the same spot so now we can just interact like that and have those moments while we're building mm -hmm. this thing. Because I love building stuff and I, you know, this makes me happy. So like just starting to learn that stuff. Do I like traveling? Do I like photography? You know, do I like, you know, like fantasy factory type of like, man, I, you know, today I'm just going to go do this random ass thing, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, one of my friends the other day had an idea. I got this, I got this facility that I'm building out. And In Arizona, right? Yeah. And uh, it's it's been we, we did a bunch of destruction, tore a bunch of stuff down. It's dusty as hell, dirty as mm -hmm. hell, you know. And one of my friends is like, "Oh, you, we should get one of those like rideable like cleaners to like just ride around and clean the place <laughs> up." I'm like, "Oh, you know what we could do? We could get two of them. We could like bumper car them. And, like while we're doing, we could fill. so so we went in there the other night and just like rode this thing. I almost I two wheeled it. I was coming around a corner trying to like chase the other one, <laughs> and like this freaking sweeper machine with like a big tank of water in a, in a like, horrific Zamboni accident, <laughs> dude. <laughs> it was it was it was close. It was close. Yeah. But uh, I'm like I had so much fun in those like 20 minutes of doing that. I'm like, Shit, oh, we man. gotta do we gotta do more of this type of stuff, you know. And so that's kind of what I'm building that's the facility out to be is like a fantasy factory idea. And then, like, inside that is a content studio. So the whole entire thing is going to be like a content studio. And then inside that is business operations. And inside that is the gym. And so, like, everything in my world is going to be, like, there, you mm -hmm. know? And the, the opportunities for me to, to, to create and to think and to, like, innovate and stuff like that, everything's going to be there so I can try this. I can try that. I can be around people. I can help, you know, bring guys in and help mentor them and teach them and all this different stuff. Right. I think it's going to make me... Uh, a lot happier. Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, I love I love that answer because it's as much as uh, you like you could have everything figured out on paper tangibly, mm -hmm. but the intangibles of life as you get older, you realize like fuck, man, you know, like I've been on this planet for thirty years. This is what I've done, and like, dude, the third episode of this podcast, just me and him, in my studio is called the Meaning of Life. And I yeah. literally said the same thing. It's like, I don't know what, I don't know what I do for fun, really. Like, I have all this fun on paper, yeah. you know? And I'm, I've been lucky to, you know, my parents and shit. Like, I had a very, I had a, uh, all the reasons to be happy, you know? Like, all these things went my way. Yeah. I get hurt. I was, oh, you know, always the best athlete where I grew up. I get hurt. Oh, I start making music and it worked. Yeah. Like, and it was out of fucking left field. So... I'm rocking and rolling. I'm not even thinking about life like this. And then I kind of like, once you get over the hoopla of like, all right, I'm financially secure. I have a, I have a solidified career. I'm good at this. Like, um, you know, I have my doubts in it like anyone else. That's why I asked about doubts. But like, I really started to freak out a little when I was like, all right, I'm in this big ass house with my buddies. We party whenever we want. We do whatever we want. The girls are never end, you know, we get older, they stay the same. 
<laughs> but, uh, but uh dude i'm like fuck man like i'm thinking about it i'm just like yo like man I, what, what the hell makes me like truly happy and like what the hell am i really supposed to be doing and i love asking that to athletes because look it's a gift and a curse to be the way you are 100 percent you are so fucking good at what you do because you're fucking relentless, man. Yeah. You know, like, and, and that's, that's the way it goes. I think where I've found some peace and solace is like looking around and asking people and paying attention that everyone has their version of this. If you're just so carefree and happy and like, at some point you turn around like, wait, I want to do something tangible. Mm. Like I have the intangibles. Now I want something tangible. Like I haven't mm. really done anything. So like, it's like the grass is greener human effect like we're all human and part of being human is like looking over there and wondering what it's like yeah. when you're here grass is always greener on the other side you absolutely know? perception of it at least because absolutely. you just you don't see all the downsides to it yeah so you look up at this like rock star life and you're like oh i get to travel i get to perform with mm -hmm. you know, in front of crowds and everybody knows me and the party that sounds great and then you get in it and you're like oh well i'm tired as hell totally. and i gotta i gotta bring the energy totally like this the people online are ripping me for my performance last night mm -hmm. and like shitting on me, even though I tried to give, you know, all my, give everything yeah, for man. them. Like, I haven't seen my family in three months. I've been traveling around Europe and I got sick and had to perform anyway. That's like you don't see that side of it. You know, I'm riding in a freaking tour bus with eight other dudes who haven't showered in three days. Cause we've just been like, you're spot on, you know? Um, but you're then you look at the athletes and you're like, Oh dude, they just show up when they play and it's freaking awesome. And then you don't see, you know, the, mm -hmm. the backside of that i've like, seen i've peeked behind the i've been lucky to yeah. peek, be behind the curtains on both of those and uh yeah i mean back to that idea of like everyone has their set everyone has their set of problems and it's just like how are you going to live your life to try to have problems that you're okay dealing with mm. you know like okay i got these problems but i'm okay with dealing with these problems they're better than having those problems to me in my opinion yeah. you know and i think that's when that's when you get really happy right when you can look at the grass being greener over there and be like it may be greener but i'm pretty green over here too yeah like, I, i'm good with this i like this yeah you know? and maybe it's not as green when you get over there but like also this is what i when i asked you about just your mind this is kind of what i wanted to get into because i knew you were like this like i know how calculated you are and yeah. how hard working you are and yet your life revolves around your entities you yeah. know baseball and then building out these these you know you're a full-time fucking vlogger which is you're the first ever as a baseball player correct yeah I, other guys have youtube channels but as far as being a vlogger yeah. like you're you're like actively like vlogging all the fucking time like you Every walk day. in here with a camera today. yeah <laughs> yeah it's uh i mean i don't even do that and i'm yeah. in content you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah. like it's uh so don't as much as i, I loved your answer also you know you're doing so much life is to be lived you know like and i and all i'm asking all i'm pointing to is like just make just make sure that you're enjoying what you're doing as much as you can because you're no doing so fucking much yeah man my schedule is freaking ridiculous like, yeah i don't have time to live my life it's actually something in the past like month i'm it's like i don't have time to live like i gotta do laundry but i don't have time to do that like i gotta, you gotta get someone I gotta, to do the laundry i gotta cook you know but like i don't have time to cook so like do i get a chef yes I, no, yes and yes get right. someone that does of the laundry course, right? but like i've never done that before and Started. so it's like man like is that the best use of yeah you know, and so I'm, i kind of struggle in this it's like this transitional period where i'm very clear now on what i what i want to do like my best skill sets are like creating content building my my brand and my platform so that i can raise all these entities up being on the field, Competing, you know, yeah. all, th th these are the things and I, and I love teaching people. So it's like, I want to teach the people in my organizations. I want to mentor them. I don't want to be involved in like the nitty gritty day to day operational side. Like, right. you know, I want to be able to go hang out with friends for six hours and have a blast and like two little comments that someone makes then spark an idea that Absolutely. then leads to the next Best business ideas. decision, right? Like I need to be in that environment more because that's what makes me happy. But it took a while for me to discover through the fire of like doing all of this, like, okay, this is where my skill set fits and this is what I enjoy. And the, like, how do I then run the other side of things by educating people and finding the right people to be able to do those things? Absolutely. You know, that they get fulfillment out of it and their skill set is fit for that. And that's been, you know, really the last year and a half of like building the team, you know, bringing on 
Rachel as my agent, bringing on Morgan for, for my marketing, Mel, like I mentioned earlier, but all the other guys too, you know, Taiki, my business partner, Momentum, like really good friends. We get along great. You know, we bring on uh, Tosh, who I've known for a long time, and Alec and Steven and De like, and just on down the list, yeah. you know, with, I don't want to, you know, mention everybody. I don't want to forget <laughs> anyone ahead. either, you know, but like, <laughs> Um, just getting the right people, yeah. you know, around is like, it's so, and I know you're like this too. I mean, you man. got your, you got yeah. your team that you travel with, your yeah. boys that you travel with. And, we have a lot of similarities, man. I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, I've, I've done it very unorthodox as well. I don't think what I, what I can say uh, we do a good job of is like balancing the fun and the work, you know? And, and like, it gets hard on me sometimes, you know, I, I, I go back and forth with being hard on myself and then most of the content in the books I read are, are, aren't are about, I'm learning, but I'm learning about like the basics of life again. Mm. Like going outside and watching the sunset every night. Mm. I do. Cause, and I never used to. I would drive right by that sunset and not even look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's, there's a lot of aspects of life that I realized I was missing out on. Yes. And that's why I talk to athletes. I always ask that question. Like not to ever throw you off your focus of like what you're here to do because right, right. you know what you're you're bro you're you have more things figured out than 99% of people on fucking planet earth you know what I mean you know what you're good at you know what you like to do and you're doing them yeah and you have the and you're getting feedback and success both monetarily and just in life in general that you're, you're doing well you're good at what you do and you're, you're enjoying doing them but that aspect of like of life is 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 something that, you know, when you get older, man, like, not not our age, I'm talking fucking older. You're just like, all right, like, fuck, man. Like, I want, you want to make sure that you did enough of that, you mm -hmm. know? And 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 it's it's an aspect, again, it's a gift and a curse aspect, and you're going to have to toe the line and internally battle it all the right. time. Am I enjoying myself enough? Am I, right now, you're, you're fucking Cy Young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I have to actively try to like celebrate that though, you know? I know. Like I won the Golden Spikes in college. I went to college with the intent, the only intent that I had was to win the Golden Spikes. <laughs> and I did it. And I didn't have a moment where I was like, holy shit, I accomplished that until three years later when I walked into my house after a season of being shitty, like really bad, the worst year of my professional career. And I walked in my house depressed mm -hmm. and saw in the corner with my little spotlight shining on my golden spikes award. And I was like, holy shit. Like I did that. And like, that was the moment three years after it, that like it hit me. And I was like, shit, wow. man. And I don't like three years that I didn't celebrate that three years that I lost of like, recognizing and congratulating myself for doing something that I set out to do that I spent five to seven years, you know, of high school and college chasing. What a, like, yeah, what a realization. So I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. You know, it's so like winning the Cy Young. It's like, I want to celebrate. I want to like, yeah. I want to fucking enjoy this. Yeah. You know, like that's, Dude, you, like, you, you should go out the same way you look at inefic inefficiencies in anything and you go, okay, a plus B plus C, I'll get to where you know what I mean yeah. like the same way you solve that equation apply it to that side of yeah. your life you know what I mean because you're just so good at anything you put an intention to you do it yeah so you know like fucking book a book a little trip go to Nobu and fucking yeah. have all your friends out here and, and yeah. you know what I mean because it's like dude these are things you're in a you're in a point zero 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 one percentile yeah of baseball players kids across the world that pick up a baseball and be like, I want to be the best. Yep. You won the Cy Young, you know, yep. and it just happened, what, last week or two weeks ago? Yeah. It He's like, I don't even feels know. feels like forever ago, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, man, if I'm, if I got to be the guy, I'm going to start texting you and be like, are you fucking, are you celebrating? <laughs> man, well, shoot, uh, now that I know that you're out here, we'll, yeah, let's, we'll bro, get it going. Go. We'll get I'll it go going one night. celebratory dinner. Get some fucking Absolutely. Get some Cincinnati buds in us. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, man. I uh, man, I, I, I this has been an amazing conversation. I gotta, I gotta ask you. I got, I got two things yeah, for go ahead. you. Uh, Mike Stud, just Mike, mm -hmm. Mike. Walk me through the transition. Yeah, are you're they, a brand are new they, guy. Are they different people? Are they different <laughs> portions of your life? No. Or is it just like what? What? Walk no. me through that. I will, yeah, I'll walk you through it. It's uh, it's it's exactly and utterly an evolution. It's a shedding of uh 
it's a chapter in the book that's that was essential as your high school experiences were to who you are now. Um, what I can say is only reason Mike Stud was ever even in existence as an entity was because when I got to Duke, it was right after the Duke, the Duke lacrosse scandal. Mm -hmm. So there was high tension on campus towards athletes. People were like fucking with the athletes, like following them on Facebook and then posting them drinking underage mm. and getting in trouble and doing all this shit. So we weren't allowed on social media. So us being idiots, we like wanted social media. So we made fake names, mm. funny fake names with our real initials. And I was Mike Stud. <laughs> um, so to my teammates, I was always Mike Stud, And it was just this little inside joke. Right. Then I get injured. I was always the guy that could like rap a little bit when we would like freestyle, get drunk at parties and shit. Yeah. So I got, I'm out for 14, 16 months. I just started dabbling with garage band. Yeah with a fucking $50 mic. That's right. And Mike Studs born, right? Um, now look, if I knew I was going to have a music career, would I have picked Mike Stud? No. <laughs> now in hindsight, do I think it would have worked with another name? I'm not sure. Yeah. I think Mike Stud made it a thing and it was like kind of like too cocky to like like, but then the music was like kind of decent enough to where you could like it and it there was this whole thing and this whole hoopla and like who I was as a person, it actually all made a lot of sense branding wise. Yes. Now we made it, honestly, there was no effort. There was no strategy behind how we acted. Like we had this whole like very ratchet, like touring's boring thing. I made a big brand out of us being partiers and that was what it all revolved around, but right. it was really all we knew. Yeah. Baseball got taken away from me. All I knew was partying girls. It's authentic, right? Very right. authentic. And, and that's the, the way you build the best brand. Is, exactly. Yeah. And, and now, authentically i've gone through an evolution as a person from a kid to a man started getting into you know all these things we've been talking about where I, one also from a business standpoint you, you know if you're not in the music industry you might not understand exactly but there was a ceiling to mike stud and it was always a ceiling yeah and that ceiling being oh isn't that the isn't that the frat boy like college the, rapper kid yeah so no matter what, my music evolved and I actually got better and started making shit that wasn't just that genre because there was a little lane there that I like just was in. Right. That came and went. All those artists died off. Yeah. But I actually like saw that trend way before, really dedicated myself, started making music, learned how to sing, learned how to record myself, learned how to do shit where I could actually survive. Yeah. But as the music evolved, like, and then as I evolved as a person, the music was evolving with it. And I'm just like, look, I don't even feel like Mike Stud. Yeah. You know, and like, I also know that like, as time's gone on, I care less and less about fame or attention. I just love being successful. I want to be able to monetize to the maximum amount and, and diversify and grow businesses and shit. And that's, that's what we've been able to do. But Mike, with a period at the end of it, and the period is very significant. Like, this is the end of the story. You know, I was, that, I was yeah. Mike Seander, the baseball player. I had a great run. That was a big part of why Mike Studd had any success because yep. I was an all-American baseball player at the time. Right. So it gave it a reason for people to care, yep. right? The music was very amateur. But like, oh, there's a baseball player. It's not bad. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Right? So Mike Siander feeds Mike Studd. Mike Studd feeds Mike. End of story, period. Like, there's no gimmick. This is who I am. It's a shedding of Studd. But now I'm so comfortable. Like, I, I actually, like... When I look back at Mike Stead, I love it. It's like looking back at my son. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, oh, that's great. That's you know, cool. like, but it's, it's just not as much as I'm still ratchet and party and we have fun and do wild shit. There's just a whole other element to like who I am as a person that that's, you know, even on social media, there's like a big undertone of like motivation and inspiration and just authenticity. Right. And hey, like, it's not all look at me, like, look at the girls. Like, it's like, yo, we're trying to figure out life too, you know? Yeah. And that's where that's it, how you get to the next audience though right exactly you yeah get, you get from like the 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 college frat boy mm -hmm. niche to like everybody is trying to figure life out exactly so now you're in your you know exactly yeah and, and the music i feel like when i hear the music now i'm like oh that 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 couldn't be my extent anyway really you know like there's there's bits and pieces that feel like they're still there. It just, but it, like I said, it feels most to me like an evolution of just like, yeah, that's remember Mike Studd? Like this is what it was. This is yeah. what it's turned into. You know? Did you uh, did you listen to the Oregon State, uh, the O State Baller song? Did, have you ever heard? Like, yes, back it, in college, was that an influence at all? 
O State Ballers, is that the football guys? As the baseball guys, back to back champs. Mm -hmm. uh, no, oh, oh, interesting. Oh, no, you know, you know what? I, I heard, I heard about them. You know who I heard? The the one thing that wasn't an influence, but I remember when I started, people were talking about was uh, the Miami football team did like uh, the U. They okay. they had like this little group called the U, or something along those lines. And um, I want to say like Cole Beasley. Something I forget who it was. It wasn't Cole Beasley, but he raps. But there was uh, there was a few people that came up. But to be honest, like inspiration wise. My biggest inspiration, or not even inspiration, it was more so like, oh, like, this is doable. I went to school with Mike Posner, mm. and I saw him get popular right in front of my eyes. Mm. And he was a very quiet kid. Like, I always supported him and liked him, but, like, no one gave a fuck at Duke. Yeah. And then I watched him get popular, started touring. I'm like, that shit looks fun. Yeah. You know? And then, and then I'm looking online. I was unaware of this whole, the genre I fell into, I was unaware of its existence yeah. until I was in it. Right. But I started, they're like, oh, I started seeing these these kids like just like on a camera, just walking around their hometown. Mac Miller. Mac yep. Miller was a huge Mac, yeah. yeah, rest in peace, Mac Miller. And I've said it on this podcast a bunch. Like he was a guy that gave me like a a real uh green light. Yeah. Like I was just like, I could do that. Not to say he, he I mean, he's a spectacular musician, but you, you get what I mean. He was just right. like a little white kid running around being himself, rapping and and I knew I could rap, yeah. you know, so I was just like, why not, you know, felt, and I, I never looked back the same way you kind of had that, no, yep. you know, that intention, I'm going to do this, and th that's, it. that's how I felt, and, and only until after I got older, I realized, like, and I started actually wanting to learn about manifestation, and how you can will yourself, and the way you think actually becomes your reality, like, in hindsight, I realized, oh, I was kind of manifesting before I even knew what manifesting was. Yeah. You know, so yeah, bro, all those, all those factors turned me into who I am today. You know, like the same way I asked you, I, Mike Studd was just so unbelievably essential to who I am today. Right. You know? Yeah. Not, a period, a period in your life. And yeah, that's, that's pretty, I like the analogy of looking back at it, like, like a son almost, or like a, you know, yeah. son, like a prior version of yourself. I, we could talk obviously all day. I got I, one other thing that I did want to ask you though, because I go through this all the time, like, I'm, I'm busy on the day-to-day -day operations yeah. and obviously in music there's like there's a ton of stuff that goes into it right you, yeah you listen to a bunch of beats you listen to a bunch of music you're drawing inspiration from different places you gotta write you gotta there's, there's all this stuff that goes into it right and i feel the same way on my end with like business it's like okay i'm doing all these things and you're kind of in the fire so you don't have time to step out sometimes and see the overall picture do you ever go through like writer's block because you're so in the like create creative block, I guess, because you're so in the moment. Yep. And like, how do you, how do you spark that creativity again? How do you get that back? Cause creativity is not something that you can just be like, Oh, today I'm going to be creative. Like it's, I have it, a quote right here on my background. It says, I think it says a lot to what you're, you never know fitting. You never know when ideas are going to hit you. You can get ideas just from sitting in a room daydreaming, just feeling the air. I think people are like radios. They pick up signals. So as I started to invest my time in like this content about shaping my mind and my perspective and, and life, right, I started realizing that like, oh, wait, like that walk to the beach was a big part of my creativity. That, that night last night where we stayed up till 6 a.m. fucking shotgunning beers with my buddies and playing beer pong until failure yeah bro like all of that is essential where i used to like i come from a baseball background where it's like you get up you show up you put the work in mm. right there's an element to life where like i i really like i was very very naive or ignorant to all this but like just the idea of like we are frequencies right tony robinson said that tony robbins said this like like if you, we're like antennas mm. and, and like, it's not the day of antennas, any day and age of antennas anymore, but like our frequencies, like if we're on the wrong station, we're getting static. Mm. That's creative block. Mm -hmm. Static. Shh. Turn it just this knob, just a little bit. You get a beautiful song. Yeah. So now like, instead of forcing myself into creativity, I just came down in the kitchen a few nights ago and I was like, you know what? I haven't been as creative since I left LA. And I would be a little in a funk and like, I'm kind of like that. I kind of have that syndrome, like that athlete syndrome where like, you're only as good as your last start. Like, mm -hmm. 
if I made a bunch of shitty ideas the last week, like I'll notice that my mood sucks just about life. Mm. And that's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Like it's backwards. It, it's backwards. As much as life, as much as like, that's what makes you great. That non-complacency and the expe expectations when you said that yeah. related to that so much. It's like, I expect all this shit and that, that's actually not right. Like when you, when you, like when you can just appreciate the ins and outs of everyday life, that's when the creativity comes back to me. You know what I mean? Like when I'm sitting there like, why am I not creative? And then I'm walking around in a funk, then I'm less creative than I already mm. was. Because mm -hmm. I'm walking around in a funk and my, my, my frequency is low, you know? Like, so I've really, dude, and I'm talking, I'm not preaching, like I'm actually talking to myself because I go through it. Literally, I had this last week, this conversation yeah. with the guys in this house. Like, oh, I don't know. And I, and I, and I noticed my mood towards general everyday life had been lessened. And that's where I put most of my focus on. When I fix that, yeah, that fixes the creativity. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be centered as, as a person. You got to be okay as a person yeah. before you And I you challenge can, you. I challenge yeah. you. I'm not good at that. Yeah, I challenge you I'm because I, you know what, dude? I really, I really do think there's a little bit of reverse. Like you said, it, like, oh, it's kind of backwards. Mm. Like, dude, if you go out there and you have a few bad ones, like... You have your own, what you're doing is working. <laughs> so don't, but like, if, if, if you can not let that impact when you go, go outside and you're like, look at that fucking sunset. Wow. Let's go have a great dinner with my friends and enjoy myself. You know what? We might have a great conversation here. I make a zillion dollars on an idea. Yeah. You know, like who knows? Yeah. So if you open, it's like an opening and closing thing for me. Like, I feel like I close myself off when I'm not proud of what I'm doing. And you're closing and it the makes door. It worse. You're closing the door to creativity. Like, yeah. is it good to lock yourself in your room when you're sad? No. Yeah. Go outside. So keep the door open to new shit. You know what I mean? And that's my that's my challenge. Uh, that's that's what I would challenge anyone to do. Because you could kind of change the way you think about it a little bit. Like, no, you don't need to be really fucking depressed if you failed your team. You know, like you know you prepared. You know you did your best. Failures are part of life. Yeah. Hey, you know, but like challenge yourself to keep yourself open i do i'm that's that's what i focus on and instead of like oh i'm sucking at this or like ooh, i don't like any of these ideas like oh why isn't someone so and so helping me you know what i'm just gonna keep my vibe high keep my frequency high you know i might walk into a, a meeting or a dinner tonight and meet somebody who's like could fill that void mm. you know but if i have a shitty mood am i gonna is that gonna happen no. if i stay in the house and complain about it to myself is that gonna happen yeah. no you know so that's that's where I've that's why I focus on what I focus on. That's why I changed what I the content and the things that I read and shit. Like I don't really read. I'm reading about shit like to help myself mm -hmm. craft my perspective on the world. Yeah. And it's worked, but it's a f never ending process. You yeah. Know? I I know. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know you do. I know you do. We have, I think we're pretty aligned on that one for yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah. But dude, you're uh you're right in the fucking wheelhouse, man. Enjoy yourself. You're a fucking Cy Young winner.